Okay, so in the last unit, we learned that the electric pressure that exists in the circuit is due to the compression or depletion of charge in that conductor. Uh, so if you're thinking about a charge capacitor on the top plate, it has a um, excess of charge. So we have a compression of charge there. And so it results in this back pressure towards the battery. And then when that equals the pressure from that positive terminal, then there's no more of a flow because there's no pressure difference anymore. Same thing for the bottom plate. There's a deficiency of charge. And so when the pressure of that plate is as low as the negative terminal battery, again, there's no longer a pressure difference, so no longer a flow. And we learned to, to use color coding to help us represent that, that pressure. So in that top charge plate for a capacitor, it'd be red, just like the positive terminal of the battery is red. And in the bottom plate, it would be blue, just like in the um, negative terminal of the battery, it'd be blue. And as it's changing pressure, um, there's different colors. So if it's not, it's high, but it's not as high as the red, then we said that it was orange. Or if it's low, but not as low as the blue, we said it was green. And then if we said it was kind of an in-between um, pressure or, um, or just an intermediate state, we said it was yellow in between those or non-pressurized. And we have various methods for gauging the rate at which charge is flowing. So once we know what that pressure difference, we could use bulb brightness or um, compass deflection. And for bulb brightness, we use uh, bulb rays. And for compass deflection, um, for the arrow tails for the flow of charge through the wire. What I would like you to do now is kind of look at these four round bulbs here that are in series. And there's no battery hooked up right now. I want you to think about what the color coding will, would look like for these wires, okay? So if you can kind of sketch that circuit and color code the wires. Don't take a whole lot of time. Be real quick about it. And now we're gonna do it again, but this time we're going to add in these four cell batteries. So I'm making a connection here. I'm making a connection here. And the light bulbs come on. Let me see if I can dim the lights here a little bit. And I'll disconnect and then reconnect. So the light bulbs come on. I would like you to uh, draw another circuit and color code that one as well. So pause the video and go ahead and color code that circuit as well. Okay, so I'm assuming your two circuits kind of look something like this. So for the one when there's no battery, it should be yellow throughout. That means it's a non-pressurized wire. Notice the color differential across any individual round bulb is the same, and so there's no pressure difference across it, so there's no um, ability to push charge through that circuit. And then for when you had the batteries hooked up, you should have this red up here and this blue down here. The in-between wire way over here is still non-pressurized, and then this one's orange and this one's green. Okay. Now I totally get why this wire here is yellow and I get why this wire is red because it's touching the positive terminal of the battery. And I get why this wire here is blue because it's touching the negative terminal of the battery. But here's my question. How is it that this wire here, which was yellow, instantly becomes orange? I mean, I get this wire turning from yellow to red because it's going to be pressurized as soon as it touches that battery. But this isn't touching the battery. How is it getting pressurized instantly? Same thing for this one. How is this losing pressure instantly? How is it having a depletion of charge instantly? I find that strange. And we need to investigate that. Where, where is that coming from? How does this wire know to turn orange, which means a higher pressure than 
than what it had just a split second ago. And how does this one know to become green, which is a lower pressure than it was a split second ago? That's what we need to investigate. So I want you to think about how in the world could we investigate that? Well, I think we need to somehow slow this process down. So as soon as we hook up the wire, bam, it becomes this. We need to slow this down somehow so that we can kind of really start observing things and thinking about this. So how in the world could we observe, how could we slow this down going from yellow to orange and from yellow to green? I'm hoping that the idea is coming up that what we could do is we could connect a capacitor here. We could take a capacitor and add it there and add it there. And that would slow things down because then that gives us a whole bunch more uh, space to put charges here and uh, take charges away here. And we should be able to see it a little bit better. And that's what you're gonna do in this first activity, okay?